Jeremy Scott, it's so great to see you here in Italy and now you have become an Italian designer for Moschino. Is it fun? <laughs> it's all about fun at Moschino, so yes, it's been fun and the journey's been fun and I hope the designs are fun too. Uh, Anna de la Russo, you are the greatest fashionista in the world. So do you rate Jeremy higher than almost any other designer? I cannot tell you that. I love him so much, but uh, I have also I mean, I'm obsessed by all the designer, I can tell you. I love all the designer. She's the equal opportunity yeah. employer yeah. with yes. her love. <laughs> So, Jeremy, your start at Moschino has been very interesting because, of course, you're famous all over the world for what you do from California and the number of stars that you dress. But here at Moschino, you started out in a slightly humorous manner with these things that recalled American pop culture. Tell us about it. Well, yeah, I mean, they are American pop culture, but they're actually the world's pop culture. And I feel like, for me, that fashion's my way of communicating. And so using icons and iconography that are understood either in Dubai, Timbuktu, Milan, Paris, LA, it all, it, it, it's like speaking one common language everyone can understand. So if someone sees Mickey Mouse, they understand Mickey Mouse and there's a, there's a, a sentiment there that's very clear. Or if you use obviously like something that's inspired by McDonald's as I did with a color palette or something similar to the Golden Arches, people get the humor and the twist on it already and see that there's this, this dialogue. And I think that's, a, that's what's important to me about using iconography and humor. Uh, I mean, I have to admit, as you know, I didn't really get that first collection for Moschino. <laughs> I only, it's only when I saw it in the store, in Rome, in fact, uh -huh. that I just thought it looked so fun and so fresh. Maybe we had to get used to you at Moschino, or maybe it's only people like Anna who can really see these things. Well, I mean, I think that there's a, everyone has their own own rate of getting to there. And there's the, I mean, my work is div divisive. I mean, I realize that too, and that's something that I, um, I don't want to say I take pride in it, but I, I, I don't have ill feelings about it because I have such strong fan base and have this profound love that I get from them and for the things that I do and the designs I make. On the flip side, it's just yin and yang. There's going to be people that don't understand it or don't like it, and it's not for everyone. Um, but you know, that's that's part of fashion, I think, because you find what you try. a lot of fun in Milano because it was missing this part of a pop, a com pop communication uh, fashion show in Milano. And this is a, it was a, a great uh, um, venue to talking about, again, about this uh, uh, aesthetical. And that's why many, many young the Italian the, uh, people uh, get in the shop to get the first uh, to get the capsule of uh, McDonald or Barbie right away because they want you make it buy, you know, make this mm -hmm. thing to, to buy. You, you want right away the stuff. This is great. How do we define pop culture today? Is it something that everybody wants? Is it still very much attached to the music scene? I mean, McDonald's is not music, it's food. I think pop culture is everything around us pretty much at this point. I mean, even a stop sign is kind of pop culture. You know, it's uh, the, the iconography around us. I mean, um, of course, we're now in something very historical, so it's a little bit of an odd thing to say everything. But even, even in a way, I mean, Mona Lisa, she is pop culture. You know, you have Jay-Z and... Beyonce posing in front of her and it makes it even a more pop cultural image and I think that that's kind of what what is you know also communication web is very pop because the language using lotta uh, in oil also lotta faces a symbol and this is kind of a pop language an expression because for example for, uh, again a new generation is speaking differently sure. it's very pop is in a very pop way. They don't speak properly like, oh, bonjour, oh, bonjour, Jeremy. <laughs> yes. It's like, right away. Image it's images, sure. it's right away. Make very, very interesting the, evol the evolution. And plus, it very loves, uh, it get loves by all the pop stars. Also, <laughs> pop, culture pop star. How's that? I mean, you get uh, all in front of, uh, in, uh, when you get the awards, it was uh, Rihanna, Katy Perry, um, Miley. Uh, Miley, Madonna. <laughs> Not there, but it was yeah. closer. Oh, you, you've won uh, maybe the first design, get all the pop star together in front row. Uh, how did this happen? Um, I guess just, it's like luck that they love me so much. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, really, I, I felt very fortunate. I mean, they're all like Katie, Rihanna, and Miley are all really good friends of mine, and they're genuine friends who I count on and call. And so they, um, 
and I've dressed them all from the very beginning, you know, er early times, from Katie's first record release, very early things with, with Rihanna, and of course Miley, where, as Miley put it herself, a lot of people wouldn't take a chance on her when she was changing and growing up, and I did. I saw, like, she's an artist and she's unveiling herself and she's becoming the adult that she will be and not the child actress playing a character. And, um, and she's, a, she's a very amazing creative person, actually. And so um, I think that that instinct that I had with them and the loyalty that they have, that I took a chance with them when they weren't the biggest, yeah, the biggest. name is in, this, you know, in the stratosphere, they really appreciate. Uh, Jeremy, I have to ask you something that yes. your mother told me. Oh, yes. Uh, she said that when I first came to see you, I discovered you in Silver Lake in L.A., and um, I wrote a little bit about you, and I said that this was somebody who no, was I'm... a little bit like Moschino. Was that right, that I really said that? When you, yeah, you wrote, um, it was after probably my, the show was called Duty Free Glamour. It was shown at the now Musee, um, um, the Arts and Decorative Museum, before it became the museum. There was a few, like two years of shows there. So it was, it was 99 maybe, it was right before 2000. And um, you said it had the wit and humor you had not seen since Franco Moschino. And so, um, yeah, so... So it, your mom cut it out. Yeah, and she kept, kept it. it in the and, paper. Then when it, and brought it back to my attention when, um, when the announcement happened, because it, you know, it had been so many years, I didn't remember that. No, me. And then, <laughs> and then I was like, wow, Susie had really actually hit their nail on the head there way advanced. So, yeah. Well, you're a great designer in your own oh, name and you. Moschino, and it's great to have a chance to talk to you and Anna. Thank oh, you so much. Thank so, you. Thank you. Thank you.